Some reports, okay, not a bunch, but a couple of people are reporting that Google is working on how to make the Pixelbook qualifiable to ship with Windows 10 instead of Chrome OS. Does this change much about the Pixelbook? Many of you probably already know the answer, but either way, let's look at some of the tech specs and see if Chrome OS is the real problem with the Pixelbook. So in certain places you can find the Pixelbook at a discounted price now, I'm guessing it's because literally no one can justify that $1,000 price, but they're discounting it to $750, which before the stylus is still pretty expensive for something that's built to run web apps. All of that money, where is it going? Into the fairly advanced tech specs for a Chromebook. It's got seventh generation Intel Core CPUs, which are getting to be a bit dated. Even I am upset that Apple has not updated their MacBook lineup to support the eight generation Intel cores, but if you're mad at Apple for that, which I am, it also makes sense to be mad at Google for that because they're not updating the CPUs in the Pixelbook product either. Starts at eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. Obviously, the Pixelbook can be configured up to like $1,700 if you wanna rank up those specs to 512 gigs of storage, 16 gigs of RAM, but still only one size option, two USB-C ports that are not Thunderbolt 3 compatible and a headphone jack. So once again, with the Pixelbook, we have a bunch of things that people don't like about Apple's MacBooks, but don't really complain about on the Pixelbook because probably no one buys it. Is that why? I was actually very close to just buying one temporarily and unboxing it and trying it out for a while, but I'm gone right now. I'm on a trip. I'm not actually here. This is a previously recorded message, so I didn't want to mess with it before I left. For one, we know that the idea of having a laptop that flips all the way around, having the keyboard on the back, and just using it as a tablet is not exclusive to the Pixelbook. There are many, many Windows PC devices that can already do this between Lenovo and not exactly in the same way, but just look at the surface line. There's so many different options to choose from when it comes to powerful notebooks or notebooks that have different ways of interaction between tablet mode and laptop mode. 95% of the time everyone's using laptop mode, but they still have that option. Whether it's not selling it with a keyboard and selling the keyboard and trackpad separately, or having a very expensive laptop that you can literally just rip the display off of, or of course, with the Surface Laptop, there's just a laptop. That's about it. What the interesting debate comes to for me is what is a better tablet experience? A Google Chromebook with no keyboard and trying to use Chrome OS with just purely a touch interface blowing up Android apps to fit a 12 inch display with fairly thick bezels, I might add. Is that better than the tablet mode on the Windows Surface devices? The funny thing looking at Best Buy is that there's actually plenty of other Chromebooks out there that can do a lot of the same things the Pixelbook can for an even lower price. It's very hard to find a Chromebook that actually costs more than the Pixelbook, but the other ones can flip around. They can have touch screens. Some of them even have rear facing and front facing cameras, which the Pixelbook does not. And if you care about old legacy ports, there are plenty of other Chromebooks that have that as well. So knowing the ports of the Pixelbook and knowing the specs inside it, would shipping it with Windows 10 really make it a better product? I don't think it could hurt, to be honest. If you ran Windows 10, you could put actual video editing apps on it. Maybe some light games that actually take advantage of that CPU in the RAM. And Windows 10, I think, is a bit more friendly when downloading files, given basically all a Chromebook does is access Google Chrome, and then you're good. Downloading things, but why do you need to download things? So you can load them into Adobe Lightroom, which, by the way, the mobile version of Lightroom is available on phones and iPads, including the $300 iPad. And with that iPad, you can buy a $100 stylus. And then you have an Apple Pencil, an iPad, Adobe Lightroom for $400. Or, of course, you could go with the $1,000 Pixelbook without a stylus. So adding Windows 10 to the Pixelbook may make it more appealable to some audiences. Maybe some people out there prefer the superior hardware, prefer being in the Pixel ecosystem, if you will. But I don't think that's a lot of people given the design of it is okay. There are these rubber bases where your palms rest and any demo unit we look at at a Best Buy store or something, they are just covered in dirt. And I imagine it does not age well given it's hard white and it appears that there's only one color option. The top of the Pixelbook has this giant sheet of glass that it's supposed to match your Pixel phone, but the glass on the top literally does nothing for your laptop. It's just there to shatter if you drop it, I guess. It sucks that we have so much glass on our phones because when we drop them, they shatter. 
matter, but I think it makes sense to not put glass on the back of your laptop because there's no point to. I'd be very curious how the Pixelbook would handle Windows 10 given it has so many buttons that are exclusive to Chrome, like the Google Assistant button or the Home button. There would be probably a gap between hardware and software here, but the Circle button on a Pixelbook basically opens a bunch of Chrome web apps. Maybe on Windows 10 it would open the Start menu or activate tablet mode. But given Android is basically ditching all support for tablets, switching the Pixelbook into tablet mode essentially means trying to use Chrome OS with a touchscreen, which based on what even a lot of pro Google YouTubers have said about the Pixelbook doesn't seem very intuitive, but I can tell you from experience using Windows 10 in tablet mode is not that great either, though at least Windows 10 has that desktop element side to it. So I would say the Pixelbook would probably sell better and maybe appeal to more audiences if they shipped it with Windows 10. They're not yet, and technically if you look it up, there's kind of a workaround for getting Windows 10 on any Chromebook currently, but if that's possible, then once again, the Pixelbook is still useless, even if it's able to run a more desktop-friendly OS that has pro apps on it, like Adobe products, Photoshop, Premiere, After Effects, apps that may actually take advantage of the 16 gigs of RAM, the seventh generation CPU, but all those complaints you may have had about Apple's MacBooks not having SD card slots or traditional USB ports, this doesn't have that either. What I think is the advantage to Apple's MacBook Pros is that while it only has four USB-C ports, all of these are equipped with Thunderbolt 3 technology, which allows each of these ports to do anything you could imagine. External monitors, external hard drives, power supply, ethernet, all of those things, and you have four different options where the Pixelbook has those two and they're not Thunderbolt 3 ready, so getting the most amount of functionality out of those ports is not going to be the same as that of a MacBook Pro. Now, granted, a MacBook Pro is more expensive, but keep in mind, the Pixelbook starts at $1,000. It ranges up to $1,700, which definitely is more than some MacBook Pros. Not the high-end ones, but it is more. If you're an artist and you're looking at the Pixelbook as a type of design system, I really recommend you watch MKBHD's video about the Pixelbook and you see how laggy that $100 stylus is with the Pixelbook. And you have to press it obnoxiously hard to actually use it. Has anyone actually tried to use this stylus? I have a hard time finding other people's reviews talking about this, but maybe mine has some sort of problem because it doesn't work at all with normal pressure that I might use with Apple's pencil, for example. That, by the way, doesn't recharge. You have to go out and buy quadruple A batteries to go with it. Like, I know we all hate the charging method of the Apple Pencil. It's awkward that you have to plug it in the lightning port for 30 seconds. It's weird, but at least you don't have to pay for that. But even if you are an artist and you want a device that you can draw on and as well as do as some office type typing or access Google Docs and things like that, I'd really recommend you check out the iPad Pros because even the more pricey models that have a ProMotion display, have 12 inch designs and work with the beautiful Apple Pencil, those are not quite a thousand dollars. You can get them for 900, 800, depending on which size you get. That combination, I still think would be worth it before buying a Pixelbook. So to reiterate, adding Windows 10 to the Pixelbook, I really don't think would change very much. It would not help very much, though I will add that it wouldn't hurt anything. I think it would be kind of a kick in the face to all of their desktops saying that Chrome OS is a powerful desktop tool and you should buy our product because it has Chrome OS and that's the future. If they were to come out and say, you know what, just put Windows 10 on it, no one wants this thing, that would be kind of admitting defeat. And it kind of goes along with the running problem I think Google has with their ecosystem of products. They don't think, how do we make a laptop experience or how do we make a tablet experience? All they basically do is say, how do we put our phone OS, Android, onto a computer? How do we put our Android device onto a tablet? Whereas Apple, I think, designs an operating system that's built for a laptop, which is Mac OS, or redesigns iOS in such a way that it's very intuitive like it is on the iPad. They think, how do we make the best OS for an iPad? Or how do we make the best OS for a MacBook? Not necessarily, how do we put iOS on a MacBook, which is what Google seems to be always doing. Even with the watches, they don't think, how do we make a great operating system for a smartwatch? They think, how do we move Android onto a watch? And that mindset is what keeps their sales numbers down in every category except the Android phones. But it's also not like the Pixel phone sells very great anyway. Third parties are what's selling Android phones, not Google. But anyway, I want to hear what you guys have to think about this. I think it's an interesting conversation given the Pixelbook is such a train wreck. Even people who love Pixel products don't like that product. So let me know what you think in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.